Psalm 119 verses 9 says, Where with thou shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? Thy word have I heed in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. The song we're going to sing today is entitled, Keep a Song in Your Heart and a Prayer in Your Mind. May God bless you. This world keeps us busy with its worries and its cares. No time to meditate and learn God's saving grace. No time to reconnect to His love. Amazing love Keep a song in your heart And a prayer in your mind Whatever you do Keep Jesus in you Keep a song in your heart And a prayer in your mind Whatever you do, keep Jesus in you. No day, no day, no night should go without a song. Sing it through the rain and sing. in you. Keep a song in your heart and a prayer in your mind. Whatever you do, keep Jesus in you. Whatever you do, keep Jesus in you. Whatever you do, Jesus in you, whatever you do, keep Jesus in you. What we are to do today, after these 10 days of prayer, is to celebrate. Yeah. What we need to do today is just to celebrate to celebrate what God has done for us during the last 10 days of prayer, what God is still doing for us even after the 10 days of prayer, and what God will do for us after these 10 days of prayer. And I've given a title to the message for this morning, believe that you have received. Believe that you have received. If you prayed for something, if you asked God for something during these last days, 10 days of prayer, believe that you have received. It may have been done, or God may be in the process of doing it, or God will do it. When? God knows best. Eh? Yeah. But just believe that you have received it. Whether it has been done, or God is still doing it, or God will do it, celebrate it as long as you prayed to God by faith in him, it's an opportunity for you to celebrate 
this morning. Yeah, there are some things that God does them instantly. Even before you finish praying, he has already answered that prayer. He has already done. He has already granted your request. Like when you ask God for forgiveness of sins, you are telling God, forgive me. That one is answered instantly. Even before you finish your prayer. Because God reads the heart. God reads the intention of the heart. And he grants that one instantly. Other prayers may take time. Maybe you are praying for a broken relationship that involves two parties. And the relationships are delicate, they are sensitive. So God handles them with care. If you are praying for such a healing of a broken relationship and it is not yet quite healed, God is still working on it. So believe that you have received an answer to that prayer. And in due time, uh, you will see that God really did answer your prayer. Yeah, because God wants both parties to be saved. And uh, he handles relationships with care. They are delicate. And he takes time. Not that uh, he's unable to do miracles, but uh, sometimes he deals with us human beings according to our limitations, our weaknesses, and he takes time by giving us a chance to mend up our broken relationships. Some things may be for future. I don't know, some, someone may have been asking for a life partner and yet you are to graduate. So that one also may not be granted after these 10 days of prayer. But believe that you have received a life partner. Yeah, you may have been asking for a girlfriend, a boyfriend, and uh, don't expect to see one uh, today or tomorrow. Eh? That may come in the future, but believe that you have received a life partner when uh, it is time. God knows when. Now there are three points that I want to share with us as we come to the conclusion of these 10 days of prayer. Uh, one, which we find in uh, Mark chapter 11, verse 22 to 24. Mark chapter 11, verse 22 to 24, is that all believers in God, all believers in God are welcome, are welcome to talk to God about their concerns. If you believe in God, if you have faith in God, if you trust in God, you are welcome to talk to him, not just during these last 10 days of prayer, but any time, all time, anywhere, everywhere, you are welcome to talk to God about your concerns. Let's look at this passage, which part of it was read for us. Mark chapter 11, verse 22 to 24. Have faith in God. That's the starting point. Have faith in God. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. If anyone says to this mountain, go, throw yourself into the sea, and he does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it will be done for him. Verse 24, therefore, I tell you, Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received and it will be yours. So everyone who has faith in God, 
everyone in relationship with God. And the, these last 10 days of prayer, we had the theme of a deeper experience with God, a closer relationship with God. If you are in such a relationship with God, a close relationship with him, you have faith in him, you believe in him, you trust in him, you depend in him. He says, ask for anything. Ask even for a mountain to be removed. If you have a reason for removing a mountain. But of course, this is, can also be symbolic of other mountains we have in life. Eh? Problems, challenges, sicknesses, lack of school fees, those are mountains. Eh? Broken relationships, those are mountains. Jesus says, ask, ask. If you have faith in God, if you believe in him, he says, ask, and it will be done for you. And you will receive. And after you have asked, after you have prayed, believe that you have received. Just believe. It may be instant, it may take time, it may be future, but believe. If the one you are asking, if the one you are talking to is God, the creator, the sustainer, God who loves us, God who loved us to the extent of giving his only son to die for us in our place instead of us, you can trust him, you can count on him, and so you can celebrate even before you see what you have been praying for. He says, just believe. Just believe. Count on him to do what he, you have asked for. So this is one, that all believers in God, we are welcome to talk to God about our concerns, about our cares. We sang, what a friend we have in Jesus. He's a, he's a wonderful friend. He's a, he's, a, he, he, he's a great friend. He's someone we can trust. Yeah. He's a friend in need. Who is a friend indeed? Yeah. Jesus is a friend in need. And so a friend indeed. We can take to him our problems, our challenges. And these last 10 days of prayer was an opportunity was a privilege for each one of us to talk to God about what uh, concerns us, about mountains that we face, we experience in life. So have faith in God. Have faith in God. Talk to him in prayer and believe that you receive whatever you ask him. The second point Second point about prayer, about talking to God, we find it in John chapter 14. John chapter 14, verses 12 to 14. John 14, 12 to 14. John chapter 14, verses 12 to 14. The point here is that all believers, yeah, every point here begins with believers, believers. We have to be believers. We have to have faith in God for prayer to work for us. And the, the point here is that all believers have Jesus as their referee, have Jesus as their guarantor. John 14, 12 to 14. I tell you the truth, anyone who has faith in me, faith in Jesus, will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than this because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name. Now, that's the next point we need to mark. Eh? That, yes, we have the privilege. We have the opportunity to ask. But this asking 
must be in the name of Jesus. You don't ask in your name. Your name is not worthy. It should be in the name of Jesus. And so he asks, he says, and whatever you ask in my, na my name, so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. Verse 14, you may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. If you have faith in Jesus, this is basic. This is the starting point. Faith in Jesus. Believing in Jesus. A relationship with Jesus. And of course, if you are in a relationship with Jesus, you will obviously know what pleases him. You will obviously know what he can grant. So he says, we ask in his name. He's our referee. He's our guarantor. You, you probably know that when you want a loan from a bank, from a circle, they usually ask for a guarantor. Yeah. Because uh, they may not trust you. Anything could happen to you and you failed to pay the loan. So they want a guarantor. This guarantor could be your employer or someone who has the means. Someone who is able to pay back the loan in case you fail. So if you are going to guarantee someone to be sure for someone, make sure that you are able to pay. Yeah. I know even in an institution like this, during registration or toward the examination time, students may come to ask employees, eh, can you stand in for me? Eh, can you guarantee me so that I register, so that I do exams? Eh? Yeah, students do that. So you just need to be careful. Eh? Uh, I, I remember standing in for a student some five years ago, and this student has already graduated five years ago, and that student has not paid back. Eh? So I'm the one who paid. Eh? You see, when you guarantee, uh, you are charged instantly. Eh? Yeah. It goes to your account instantly. So if you are not going to pay back, then whoever guaranteed you pays. Eh? So I paid that money. Because the student graduated, and the student even changed the mobile phone number. <laughs> so I've learned to be careful. I've learned to be careful. If I'm going to stand in for you, then I must be sure. I must be sure that in case you don't pay, then uh, I will not be in trouble. My life will still continue. Yeah. But Jesus now, he says, you, 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 you borrow in my name. Yeah. After all, he, he already paid. Especially if you are asking for forgiveness of sins. That one he already paid. So he can guarantee you. He can be your referee. If what you are asking for is forgiveness of sins, he can guarantee you. He has already paid. He has no problem. With you defaulting. Yeah. So he says, ask in my name. I will do it. I already paid. Ask for forgiveness in my name. I will do it. You will be forgiven. Ask for anything. And he says, he will do it. He can, he can guarantee us. When you ask for employment, for jobs, as many will be doing after you finish your studies here, they usually ask for a referee. Many times, three. People to recommend you. People to say that you are worthy to be given the job. Jesus says, he's there. You can ask. You can ask to go to heaven. Eh? You can ask for eternal life. 
in his name. And he will recommend to the Father that let him come. Let him come. Let him receive eternal life. Yeah. He believes in me. He has accepted my sacrifice on the cross. Father, let him come. He can recommend you if you believe in him. That's what he says. For those who believe in him, he's there as our referee. He can recommend us to receive eternal life. He can recommend us to be forgiven sins. So all who believe in Jesus, we have Jesus as our referee, as our guarantor. For any debt that we might have or for anything that we need to have. The third point, the third point and the last, we find it in First John. First John, this is the piece of John. First John, chapter 5, chapter 5, verses 13 to 15. First John, chapter 5, verses 13 to 15. First John chapter 5, verses 13 to 15. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God. You can say believing, believing, believing is the starting point. You have to be a believer. You must have faith in God. So that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have in approaching God in prayer. That if we ask anything, anything, now mark what follows after that. If we ask anything according to his will. So it's not just about asking. But the asking must be according to his will. He hears us. Verse 15. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked for. So again here we see all believers all believers in God, in Jesus Christ, can ask God within his limits. If you believe in God, you believe in Jesus Christ, you are welcome. You are welcome to ask him about your concerns, to ask him to be your referee, your guarantor, but according to his will. According to his will. According to the limits that he has set. So we can ask for anything, but according to his will. You can't ask God for money to take drugs. Now, taking of drugs is not according to God's will. Such money he will not grant. He will not grant such money. You can't ask God for a second wife. Eh? <laughs> you are already married and you want to ask God for a second wife. That one is not according to his will. He will not grant, he will not grant such a prayer. So we can ask God for anything, but according to his will, his will. So we need to know the will of God. And how do we know the will of God? Well, we have his word. 
take time to study the Bible. Take time to study the Bible, the Word of God, to know God's will, so that even as you pray, even as you ask God for anything, it must be anything within, anything within the boundaries set by God in his word. Within the boundaries set within his word. You are asking God for a life partner. You are an Adventist. And you have seen someone, an un-Adventist, and you're asking God to give you that one. Well, such interfaith. Okay, you are both Christians, but uh, there are some differences. Eh? Between Adventists and non-Adventists, there are differences. Very basic differences. So if God doesn't answer such prayer, don't be surprised, eh? Because it is not according to what? To his will. It's not according to his will. Yeah. And if you are an Adventist and you are asking God to give you a fellow Adventist, okay, it may be instant, it may take time, or it may be in the future. Yeah. But just believe that you have received. So this is the third point we are seeing here about prayer, that all believers, we are welcome to ask God for anything but according to his will. Anything within. It's like this university has a, has a fence around it. Eh? So God is saying, you can ask for anything within within this university. Eh? Yeah. Because you go outside in Barasi, you will find other things. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. The moment you come to our gate here, you are told you are now entering what zone? A drug-free zone, alcohol-free zone, yeah. come we stay free zone. <laughs> You can find come we stay in Barasi. Eh? Here, no. Yeah, so those who want come we stay, they are in Barasi, not inside here. Yeah, we don't entertain that here. If you want that, then you will have to get out of the dorm. Eh? Or even out of the houses inside here. If you are a worker, you want some come we stay, then you can only have it outside not within here. You can't go to the administration and ask for such a thing as a student or a worker. That can you allow me to have someone to come and stay with me inside here? No. Of course, we don't even encourage you doing that outside. Eh? But of course, now when you are out there, we may not have much control over you. But we discourage, even if it is out there. Yeah. If you are a believer, if you are a believer in God, in Jesus Christ, then you are 24-7 a believer, regardless of wherever, where you are, regardless of the time of the day. You are a believer. You can't say that now. I will be an Adventist inside the campus, but once I'm outside, then, yeah, I've seen students, yeah, inside here we say you don't put on these earrings eh? inside here. So what do they do? They have them in their bags. Eh? Once they're out of the gate. Yeah. Yeah, but we pray that you would remain the same wherever you are. Yeah. Whether here or outside. Represent this university. Represent the ideals of this university. We, we do our best to try to explain why we require certain things. Eh? But maybe we have not made ourselves quite clear. Yeah. Why we say don't put on earrings or put on bangles, you call them. 
Yeah. I once asked a student why he was putting on a bango, and he said he was given by a grandmother. Why? To protect him. Now, a bango, how does it protect? Well, if you believe in God, in Jesus Christ, you surely don't need uh, protection from things that don't protect. It's just a belief. But really, there is no protection from such things. So there are limits. There are limits God has set for us for things that we can ask from him. And it's our responsibility to know. To know God and his will so that we can ask according to his will. And sometimes, sometimes it may be God's will that we remain with the undesirables. We remain with the painful things. Jesus is an example for this. He had the death on the cross before him. And in Gethsemane, he prayed that God may take away that death. Well, God never answered that prayer. Yeah. He prayed three times. But he would finish his prayer by saying, not my will, your will be done. So it was God's will that Jesus dies on the cross for your salvation, for my salvation. If God had answered that prayer, we would be doomed. There would be no hope of salvation for us. So there are times when we may be undergoing certain painful experiences and God says, my grace is sufficient. Yeah, Paul talks about a thorn in the flesh in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, which he prayed that God may remove and yet God never removed it. It was a thorn in the flesh, a painful experience. We are not told what it was, but it was something undesirable. And God simply said, my grace is sufficient. I will give you grace to enjoy it. I will give you grace to live with it. That's good enough. And that may be God's will. That may be God's will. So it is not every time that God gives us things that are desirable to us. It can also be that the undesirable are good for us, especially for our salvation. When it comes to our salvation, then some of those experiences may bring us closer to God. Because when everything is smooth, we tend to forget. We tend to relax. And so God may leave certain things just to, to, to check on us, just to keep us closer to him. Even when we pray, well, he will not take them away because we need them to keep us closer to him. We need them to be saved. We need them for us to have eternal life. So, as we come to the end of these 10 days of prayer, the word of God is telling us to believe that we have received. Yeah, if we had time, we could... Uh, Listen to some testimonies. I'm sure there are people who have had their prayers answered. There are those who are waiting to see. Yeah. As long as it is something that was pleasing to God, according to his will, something that would glorify God, if it has not been done, then God is working on it. Or God will do it in the future. Just believe that you have 
received. Believe that you have received. May God bless us by granting our, our prayers and the, the desires of our hearts according to his will. Shall we stand for the closing prayer, please? <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity we had, an opportunity of 10 days of prayer, an opportunity of talking to you in prayer an opportunity of bringing our burdens, our cares, our concerns, our challenges, our problems to you. And Lord, you have told us that if we have brought this by faith in you, we have received them. Help us, Lord, to believe that we have received even if it will mean waiting to see you doing it or to see you do it in the future. Help us, Lord, to be patient, to wait upon you. Lord, we pray that you will always be our grantor, our referee, as we plead to you for the forgiveness of sins. We pray, Lord, that you will show us your will. Teach us to know you. Teach us to know what pleases you. So that even as we continue to ask, we may ask according to your will. Thank you for the opportunity we had to come for worship this Holy Sabbath day. As we depart, may your spirit continue to be with us, to guide us, to help us do your will. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.